I have a second channel, Cube Compium DDX. Hey everybody. So I'm sure many of you probably have wondered, can you actually upgrade from Windows 7 directly to Windows 11? So first and foremost, um, chances are on a computer that's running Windows 7, that computer will not meet the minimum requirements for Windows 11, so you could theoretically install Windows 11 on that machine. You would just have to use one of several methods to uh, modify the installer to um, bypass the checks. One way I would do it is use the option from Rufus, I think it's 3.18, the version. Um, use that version. There's an option you can choose to um, set up the installer to bypass the checks. Like I said, there's several different ways. And I got a uh, USB over there ready to go. Uh, it can install Windows 11 on UEFI hardware or classic BIOS like this Socket AM3 system here. So this is the uh, computer from the late friend. I did a video of this thing a while back. This is the only computer I, I, I have in my possession that I don't think has ever ran Windows 10. Uh, the reason why that's important is we need to have a system that will not automatically activate on its own because I want to see if the 107 license will carry over from 107 to 111. So that being said, um, I got a hard drive thrown in this thing and um, first thing I'll do is actually install Windows 11 and see if there's a uh, license, a digital license, which I seriously doubt because my buddy back, to, back in the day, um, he passed away in 2013. So this computer um, never saw Windows 10 to my knowledge because Windows 10 came out in 2015 and he also did not run Windows 8.1 or Windows 8 on this thing because as we all know, Windows 8 was terrible. This machine ran Windows 7 the last time it was running a version, uh, actual, you know, operating system. So, I'm going to actually go ahead and do a quick install Windows 11. And again, just to check and see if there is any activation there or not. And if there's not, then we can definitely proceed forward with this machine. Okay, everybody. So, I went ahead and installed Windows 11 Pro. And finally, it looks like we have a machine here that does not have a... Uh, Windows 11 license at least for Pro because I actually I tried home first and home actually had a uh, had a license interesting so um, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert our Windows 7 DVD into the DVD drive and we're going to go ahead and wipe this install Windows 11 and install Windows 7 that being said um, First, let's go ahead and get a quick look at the specifications. Okay, so there's our specs. It's an AMD Phenom 2, 925 CPU, 8 gigs of RAM. And our graphics card is... If it's in here, maybe not even in here. Oh, okay, okay. So, it's got a, uh, it's got a Radeon... Uh, I think it's a 6000 series card, not sure exactly what what model. Um, that being said, we'll go ahead and get, get this thing restarted and we'll go ahead and install 107. Okay everybody, so now 107 is ready to be set up and I figured I'd take an opportunity to show you guys an example of Windows 7's out of box experience because of course modern windows uh, windows 10 windows 11 windows 8 you know those operating systems don't ask you the important questions like what time zone are you in or what's the date and time what do you want to name the pc things like that so let's go ahead and run through this so i'm gonna put my name in here and we'll just we'll just keep the default matter of fact let's call it user why not See, of course, in Windows 10, for example, um, it automatically assigns this randomized computer name, kind of like how Windows XP used to do back in the day. We'll skip this part. I'll put the product key in later. And we'll say, ask me later on this. See, it's, it's even it even asks you options for like Windows Update and things like that. And of course, here, 
I can set the time zone to Eastern Time. I don't have to go into settings and change it later. And I should note, um, the uh, current date and time is not correct because, well, uh, I think it's safe to say that uh, Windows 11 was in there messing around with it. It changed it from the uh, Eastern Time to Pacific Time. So let me go ahead and just verify that time, make sure it's correct. That would be a yes. Let's see what is hit next on that. I just realized the date is actually not correct. It's actually um, Saturday. But anyway. So yeah, it uh, 107, of course. It asks you important questions like what time zone are you in? What do you want to name this PC? What's the date and time? And things like that. How do you want to configure Windows Update? And of course, Windows 11, as you'll see in a moment, it will ask you a lot of stupid questions like your advertising ID and things like that. So, anyways, go move on to the next steps. Okay, so now um, we've got Windows 7 installed and we got just enough drivers on here um, to start Windows 11 installation. I got network access on here and what the properties here. I don't have the actual GPU driver on here, but that's not really needed for this case. So there's our specs. Uh, again, AMD Phenom 2 Quad 925 CPU, 8 gigs of RAM. There you have it. So now, you can go ahead and start the uh, Windows 11 installer. And I should mention again, this installer was um, it was set up using the uh, Rufus utility to bite to have it not do the uh, all of the various checks for hardware to this install regardless. So this may take a moment to get going. There it is. As you can see, the new Windows logo. Now, I should mention it's important to make sure that uh, you're running 64 bit Windows 7 in this case. If you have 32 bit, then you will not be able to do an in place upgrade at all. So, Let's go ahead and turn this off. Let's see if we can do an in-place upgrade on C4-bit Windows 7. So it's going to do its little quick little check here, and it, of course, it bypasses the TPM check and all that good stuff. It's crazy, the uh, requirements for Windows 11 being set so high, when this OS will run on a variety of older things, including MBR based systems and the systems that don't even have UEFI firmware on them. Now in the meantime I should just say that um, I don't exactly suggest installing Windows 11 on systems that don't meet the requirements for the purposes of reselling because when the computer goes to uh, do an in-place upgrade to a new uh, feature build uh, the person would likely encounter problems in that in that case. So I'll go ahead and accept these terms. So I should mention, okay, so the option to keep personal files and apps is grayed out. So um, you will be able to keep personal files only, it seems. So we'll just we'll just go with this option here, keep personal files only. The thing I question though is would it carry over the uh, license? That's the that's that's another thing I'm really curious about. So if you want to keep your files and apps, then you would need to go from Windows 7 to Windows 10, and then from Windows 10 to Windows 11. Let's hit next on this. And it says, do you want to continue using this selection? Uh, well, yeah. 
Now what's interesting is I do recall in the past when doing a Windows 10 installation on a Windows 7 system, if the Windows 7 system was not activated, um, the setup would generally tell you before proceeding with the install. So I'm curious to see what happens here. I'm curious to see if uh, it will go from uh, an activated Windows 7 Pro license to an activated Windows 11 Pro license. Okay, so we'll go ahead and click install and let's see what happens here. Okay, so now we'll turn off the location, find my device, and diagnostic data, inking and typing, tailored experiences, and advertising ID. Now, since we didn't do a clean install, we didn't um, get the same out-of-box experience um, setup that you would get if you did a clean install. So, we'll hit accept on all these. And I uh, already got the desktop. And of course, you know me, I'm going to go ahead and kill OneDrive setup. Make sure it ain't running in the background. Okay, good. So, now we have Windows 11 on here. Let's see if we carried over a license. So that's, that's probably another thing you may be wondering is, uh, would it actually carry over the Windows 7 activation to uh, Windows 11 like it would do Windows 10? Let's see. Now apparently is a no. So you can see here that it did not carry over the license for the activation. However, um, if you were to act, if you were to go from Windows 7 to Windows 10, and then from Windows 10 to Windows 11, it should carry over just fine. So I think that um, wraps up this one so with that being said what I suggest going straight from Windows 7 to Windows 11 if you're gonna upgrade an old computer my answer would be no because the simple fact that number one you can't um, carry over your files and settings or your, your files and programs and number two you cannot actually um, do a free upgrade from Windows 7 straight to Windows 11 However, the, here's the catch. So, if you have an older Windows 7 computer, first you want to do, first thing you want to do is upgrade to Windows 10. So have two USB drives ready to go. Have one with Windows 10 on it. That way you could do the free upgrade from Windows 7 to Windows 10, which you can still do even today. You can uh, do the free upgrade from Windows 7 to Windows 10. And then once you finish the upgrade to Windows 10, you should be able to then upgrade from Windows 10 to Windows 11 and you would retain your programs your files and also you can upgrade from Windows 10 to Windows 11 and um, retain the uh, digital license that's the key thing is the setup utility for Windows 11 apparently does not have that functionality built in to where it will do and it will do an upgrade from Windows um, 7 to Windows 11 and retain the license. However, I do wonder um, would you be able to upgrade from Windows 8 to Windows 11? That's something I'm going to have to try in a different video. So um, be looking forward to that. I'll probably throw a, I'll, what I'm doing is probably throwing an installation of Windows 11 or Windows 8 on this computer. Excuse me. <laughs> I may install Windows 8 on this thing. Um, and then try upgrading from Windows 8 to Windows 11. Anyways, hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Well, everybody, that wraps up for this video, and I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please like the video. Also, don't forget to subscribe to your channel, and be sure to tick that bell so you'll get notified when new videos are posted. Also, don't forget, I have a whole lot of other interesting videos here on the channel to check out. And also, in addition, I have a second channel, CubeComp MTDX, where I have all sorts of other videos not exactly related to technology. Links to the channels are available at the end of this video. Again, 
I thank you for your support and thanks for watching this video.